Philippe, there was another thing I was going to hit on earlier here too on, on the podcast, and that okay. was the strategy on how do you figure out what percent a stake pool should use or charge? And when we do our advanced stake pool operator episodes, we're going to bring up those subjects and more on how, do you, how are you going to do business. Now, some people, they don't like to put out their business secrets, but I'm going to give you an example of what I plan to do. So what I plan to do to establish the staking percent is I'm going, when it goes real world, once it, once we're on real world mainnet sometime uh, mid Q1, early Q2 of next year is I'm going to set the percentage high, right? I'm thinking about 8%. I and mean, that sounds like a lot. And people are saying 8%, what the, you know, but it's to work out the real world numbers if I start high and then start working my way down and cutting it back and building up the pool. Because if I start low, it's hard to go up. You know what I mean? Yes. Like if I start true. low at 2% and then I find out I'm running a huge deficit and then I have to make a choice and I say, wow, at 2%, I'm, I'm operating at a loss, for example, for example. It depends on the transaction load and it depends on so many other factors that we don't know yet. It's going to be very experimental, even when, it, when it's real world. And I thought, well, in real world, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to start high and then work my way down. Because if I start low and you go up, people get mad. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, that is true. That and is once, true. You, once you make people mad, it's like hard to get them back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's true. No. And, and just to give you uh, an idea, we haven't decided, my staking pool hasn't decided our stake pool operator fees yet. We're actually talking about it consistently. But uh, when Rick refers to 8% or 2% or 5% or whatever percentage the stake pool operator fees uh, charge, please note that, um, well, first I want to say that Coinbase just released Tezos staking and they charge 25% of your rewards. Okay. So 25%, it's in the fine print, go read the terms and conditions. So if you choose to stake with Binance or Coinbase moving forward, yeah, it's ease of mind, but I guarantee you using a third party staking service, you will be saving ADA and it is of your rewards value. It's not of the balance of your wallet. So say you have a hundred thousand ADA. I'm just doing these numbers because I'm thinking on the fly and it's easy for me to calculate. We have a 5% annualized rate. So that means every year, if it's 5%, we, we know that the staking, the test net is probably going to be between 6 and 12%, but 5%, you'll be receiving around 5,000 ADA per year. And let's say a staking pool takes 5% of that. So it's 5% of your 5%, if that makes any sense. So five, if you get 5,000 ADA, 5% 5 of that, I don't know, 250 ADA, you'll be paying to the pool per year to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, run your own slots. It's actually more cost effective for you to delegate to a pool if you have set amount, because the chances of you winning slots within the blockchain are extremely diminished when you have a certain balance. That's the reason why pools are formed. It's to give you a better chance, the pool, the better chance of winning rewards and winning slots and then ultimately everyone wins so the key for these staking pools you know rick i'm sure rick's philosophy is the same and my philosophy is the same everyone is looking for staking rewards and trying to maybe live within the ecosystem the purpose of delegating to a pool is for us to make your staking as passive as possible you are performing work but at the end of the day, you can go to sleep at night. You don't have to worry about whether or not your rock pie is sitting in your home internet and you had a power outage or anything like that. Let Rick, let, let Rick's server solve that. Let my server solve that. We are up running all the time and you don't have to worry about any of those things. You can go on vacation. You can, you can do what you like and still stay in tune with the ecosystem. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm rambling now, but I'll pass it back over to Rick. Oh, no, you're not rambling, man. You're, I love your rant, so <laughs> just go, man. Just go for it. Yeah. The uh, pool operators, are, we're, we're also going to do the same thing. I think the general concept amongst the pool operators is 
They want to give you a set it and forget it experience where you don't have to worry about your ADA. You can just point to their pool and they'll take care of making sure the server's online and that things are working correctly. They monitor the network. They make sure the software is up to date. So that's what the pool operators are in general doing. I just call it set it and forget it. So you don't have to... You, most people, they don't want to be in there like, oh, I need to redelegate. I need to redelegate. I need to redelegate. They, people don't want to do that. Yes. I, I don't think they will. Now, there are some people who will because it's fun. You know? It's like, hey, you know, I, let me see if I can do better. It, and remember, it's going to take some epochs. Uh, it's going to take up an epochs to elapse. I used 8% as an example. I'm going to try to refine that number based off of the test net over the next couple of months and say, okay, where should I start? And then go down from there. And that's just an example. Uh, some pool operators are going to start off at 0%. God bless you. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't do it. I can't operate a lot. No, um, no. It's the, the pool got paid for itself. And also f hardware, future hardware upgrades too. So you want, might want to consider that if you're going to improve uh, performance or whatever the case may be. But most of the pool operators, all the ones that I've talked to in Telegram, their goals are generally 100% uptime or as close as possible, as close to 100% as possible. So if you can find a pool that can hit that 100% mark, the key things, the key parameters are network performance, network latency, and uh, that 100% uptime. As long as they're hitting those marks, they should be performing quite quite well. I'll let the pool operators speak for themselves next week for the next episode so they can give us some pointers. And maybe we'll have the hackers come back on again. They said um, once, the, once we get closer to the time and the protocols refined, they can help people figure out how to set up their servers.